Hello, this is Daniel Dolphin with Dolphin Horsemanship, and uh, I had a science gasm this morning. There has been a specific little thing about bits that I have been researching and trying to get my brain wrapped around for months and months now. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, this is something I, I had actually contacted uh, famed saddle maker, bit maker, spur maker, silversmith. Mr. Jeremiah Watt and asked him some questions about this and he was very generous with his time and, and uh, confirmed some thoughts for me and kind of brought up some more questions and so forth and, and uh, through my own research I've hopefully kind of got, got a beat on this now or at least I, I understand enough about it to be comfortable to to present it to you and, and this is on copper inlay and, and the metals of bits and why that stuff matters. So if you have seen the Bit Basics video, uh, I talk about this somewhat in that, but I don't go into a lot of detail, but but basically I, I, I bring up that the king of the metals as far as I'm concerned, or, or as far as what horses have told me in my experience, is the sweet iron bit with copper inlay. And I've known that that worked for, for a long, long time, but I haven't ever really understood why. With regard to the metals, I said in that video that I wasn't real keen on the alloys. I tended to not see the, the response in horses that we might want from those things. And I really think I've kind of found out why here, uh, according to the science. So I've got two major categories here why I, why I have, again, according to to physics and science and, and mechanics and stuff why the sweet iron with copper inlay is such a good combination so the first part of it is is mechanical and, and this wouldn't just apply to sweet iron with copper inlay it's more the sweet iron aspect of it but what sweet iron is uh, technically would be known as cold rolled or mild steel um, it, it's just plain Jane steel. There's nothing special about it. It's not any any particular proprietary patented alloy or anything. You could buy it from a multitude of uh, metal sources. Any any metal place in the world would carry that type of stock. Um, the really good thing about it is the rust. And, and in that video, um, you know, through the research that I've done, you, you tend to hear that, that the copper and sweet iron thing is sort of a, a sweet and sour type of a relationship. And, and that's not at all true. I, I, I kind of even believed that when I had uh, done that video. But the part of the sweet iron that is so important, I think, is simply that it does rust. Uh, and, and we'll even get into that a little bit more in the second part of this. But one thing I'm absolutely convinced of, when we get a horse that is actually picking the bit up, that's using muscles in their mouth. There are muscles in the corners of the mouth and the lips and all. There's muscle and the, the tongue is a muscle. And just like any other muscle, they're subject to fatigue. And so when a sweet iron bit rusts, it gets some texture to it, which makes that bit significantly easier for the horse to kind of grip with his mouth and hold. Um, the, the flip side of that, the majority of bits that you're going to buy, and particularly the ones that are um, these alloys and stainless steels, one of the reasons they're going to pick those metals is because they don't rust, and they're going to highly polish them because that's what you want to see on the shelf. You want you want something that is shiny and new looking and, and cool. You don't want something that's kind of rusted looking. But specifically because it is so shiny and highly polished, for the horse to hold on to that bit is like trying to hold on to a greased pig. It, it's difficult and it's going to cause fatigue and that horse is going to sour to that bit because it, you know frankly a two hour ride of holding that thing in the, in the proper position is a pain in the butt uh, their mouth just gets tired of it after a while so i really believe that that the rust and texture of the sweet iron in that bit is a key component of why they work so well and i have several snaffles that are just sweet iron and i have to say they're all pretty well accepted with the horses as well um when we add copper in there, when you hear about copper in a bits, 
universally they're going to say that what the copper does is it causes salivation. Um, and here's one of the things that's never made a lot of sense about that to me. When I ride a horse with a pure copper bit, and I've got several of those, particularly in the snaffles that have just solid copper mouths, I don't really see that. I don't. I don't see more salivation from the horse with just the copper. And I've always kind of that's puzzled me a little bit. But again, I knew the combination worked, so I'm not going to knock it. But when we go to straight copper, we you know you don't see lots of salivation. So it doesn't seem like copper in and of itself really does create that salivation. I had a science gasm this morning. I'm still. I'm. I feel like a little kid. Uh, haven't got this all figured out because again this has been months if not years of, of research to do this so what the key component is is a process called galvanization um, and galvanization is basically two dissimilar metals coming together and one of them th through an electrical process is going to corrode much more fast much more quickly than the other one is and there is actually a galvanic scale and i'm going to try not to get too deep into the science here because i mean that stuff interests me but it probably doesn't interest most of you but the farther metals are apart on the galvanic scale the more accelerated or or intense that process is going to be and this is actually what runs a battery so one certain type of battery is called a bimetallic couple and I have some notes here I need to re refer to and this consists again of two dissimilar metals immersed in an electrolyte solution so with regard to the horse that's the saliva and an electric current or a flow of electrons is generated when the two electrodes are connected by exterior conductive paths uh, which would be the tongue and again the saliva so on that galvanic scale the ones on the low end of the scale are going to be what's called an anode that's that's a certain type of electrode and in the case of the bit that is the the steel uh, and it is going to be the one that is going to corrode the fastest on the other end of the scale is the cathode and the cathode is going to be the, the metal that doesn't corrode and again the the gap in between the two metals on that scale and I, I think uh, I think there were six position differences between copper and steel on the galvanic scale so if you had two metals that were that were one and two that you know there was really only one position separating them you're not going to have much corrosion there but the farther they get apart the more that corrosive process takes place which again is actually driving an electric current so what a copper and sweet iron bit does on a horse's tongue is pretty much exactly the same sort of thing if you take a square 9 volt battery and you touch it to your both of the poles uh, to your tongue you kind of get that little tingling sort of a feeling and I'm, I'm sure that the the bit you know it's not designed to be a battery it's it's going to have a much weaker uh, sort of a stimulating effect to it but it will have a stimulating effect and that is I think why the horses tend to like it it adds some interest it, it calls their attention to the bit and it kind of keeps their mouth live and keeps it from getting numb to it now it certainly isn't an electrical current that is going to shock them or, or you know it doesn't cause discomfort again as you put a battery to your tongue you could hold that there all day long and it wouldn't cause you any discomfort at all but anyway two major reasons why the sweet iron with copper inlay rules as far as the bit goes first of all it's the rust and the texture of the sweet iron and then secondly that galvanization process and I really honestly as I think back through uh, all of the horses that I've had experience with I cannot I honestly cannot think of a single horse that really had a you know a, a problem that I could could form a pattern on that was related to a sweet iron with copper inlay bit I have seen horses that didn't like stainless steel I have seen horses that clearly didn't like sweet iron alone I have seen horses that didn't like copper alone I, I really honestly can't tell you that I've ever seen a horse that didn't like uh, a sweet iron with copper inlay bit 
pretty excited. I, I know probably only about four people in the world will find this as interesting as I do, but but uh, it, it's it's been a pretty cool morning. Sorry to do the video in my wife's car here. It's just it's really cold and windy and a lot of noise out there. I was kind of looking for a quiet, warmer place uh, to shoot this video, but hopefully. Uh, if you're following me, then the, the information and the content is probably a lot more important to you than uh, than the marketing and all of that stuff. So anyway, Daniel Dolphin with Dolphin Horsemanship. Science is cool. Thanks and have a blessed day.